All right, guys, welcome back. So a little in the rough episode, it's your man Short Game here. I'm out here in St. Petersburg, Florida. That's right, I'm nationwide, guys, I'm going everywhere. You heard that right. With the help from my sponsors, I was able to fly to Florida to visit Tyler. He used to be a plumber. I think that's cool as hell. Today we are scrambling together so we can learn more about the trades and Tyler's story. All whilst I show off my cool golfing skills. We're in the rough. Presented by Main Filters. Getting ready to hit a dry. What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? My man here has been, uh, what, what did you do before this? Um, before what? Before, before we start working together. Oh man, breaking my back every day, plumbing. <laughs> Hell yeah, man. For way too many years. <laughs> He's a hard working man. All right, we're just doing a fun little three holes here. We're scrambling together as a team. Try to, we're gonna break par, Tyler. What do you think about that? Yeah, we're gonna do more than break par. That's right. I think if you play all right, we might. That's right. Make sure you speak up with your cool slow, low guy voice, all right? My, low my... guy voice. <laughs> look how masculine this guy is. Jeez Louise. <laughs> it really makes me look like short game. <laughs> Where are we going? We got par four. You want to hit it about, you want to hit it just to the right of the lolly over there. The line's right about there. All right, he went about out there, but it is wide open. Hopefully I can go straighter than that. Are you going to follow me out there or what? I don't know. I'm going to try to put it right in the middle for you, man. We're a scramble team now. Uh oh, I did go right. But less right than you. Yeah, man, we just turned this par four into a par five. <laughs> <laughs> it's really <laughs> good. So, Ty, you were a plumber for a long time, right? Yeah, like, uh, and we'll drive seven, seven and a half years or so. All right, we'll drive a little, like, half speed for the wind. I kind of found it in college when you know my friends were going to school and i kind of i wanted some more spending cash and i got into the just uh handyman kind of work and followed through it um mm -hmm. and at that point in my life kind of realized you know you don't really need a degree to be the most successful in different areas yeah and uh yeah the plumbing and just the trades in general were, a, were an open gate it's kind of like pick and choose so i went with the plumbing instead of electrical or hvac or anything like that makes sense uh, a little more oh. hands-on, more digging, which kind of was no fun, but yeah. Um, oh, look at the shape you're in. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Whoa, it's a nice high one. Left side of the green, good contact. Ty, so, uh, what's the uh, what's the biggest paycheck you ever got as a plumber, man? Yeah, there's a pretty a pretty yeah, wide. Talk, huh? There's a pretty narr like uh, you know large narrative of plumbers making crazy money um you know the industry is kind of what you make of it most commonly is uh oh it's dead straight okay. right side of the green over the bunker oh, i caught the bunker to the beach i caught the bunker hell yeah oh wait keep talking man that's interesting um, you know sadly in the industry i would say a lot of people are underpaid just because a lot of the times the you know the real person making most of the money is the owner <laughs> to be you know in, in that kind of seat it takes a long time yeah, I was living out in California for a year doing plumbing. I guess that's a different story, but out there I was making commission only, selling really, really big jobs, doing doing quite well. Um, yeah, I mean, I was making three to five thousand a week. Damn, upwards of more. Yeah, I had like an eighteen thousand dollar month when I was there. That's crazy. Just as a technician, not as an owner. Yeah, just a technician. Damn. But I was kind of like a a, a job. I ran my own job sites and stuff as well. Hired. We had helpers, but I had to organize it all, handle everything as far as material and whatnot. It was, it was kind of like a supervisor position for yeah. ourselves. Yeah, I was out, out there, man. It's a, it's a different world of money and careers for sure, but that's probably where I was making making some really good money before I kind of got out of it. Yeah. Well, it's a lot more money you make as a waiter. There's <laughs> a lot more people willing to do that. <laughs> I'm not staying with the restaurant industry, man. It's cool. Uh, by the way, we're taking Tyler's shot here. I'm in the bunker. We're gonna go easy. We got a third shot here, about 50 yards. Tyler's gonna drop one on for us. But yeah, dude, working in restaurants, man. I mean, I'll, I'll, you know, best I can do is like three, four hundred in a night, like good busy spot. There's better spots, but it's hard to find. You need to be in a big city. But the idea of pulling in a three or five thousand dollar paycheck, that's unreal, man. Hey, no chunk on that one. Got us a little par putt and everything. All right, man. Almost. All right, second shot. Where are we sitting? 50 yards out. 
me to prove that my name is Short Game. Oh, fudge. Chunked it. I bleed it right into the damn thing. That's a little bit about. What do you think? So I feel like a lot of people from the outside of the industry think of plumbing and probably maybe think of the work being simpler than it is. A lot of sitting in the mud, turning a wrench, but I mean, you're solving a lot of problems out there, right? Yeah, I mean, all of all of the things we're solving are you know, people's issues in their homes. You know, things that are see, things that they're dealing with in their everyday life. I mean, you know, if someone's toilet stops working. That's kind of like a, a thing people are, you know take for granted over the years that they really need. Yeah, you don't, you don't realize how much you need a toilet or an ice maker until you <laughs> don't have it. Yeah, it's a damn truth. You know, your, your sink starts leaking and <laughs> your kitchen's flooded out. I mean. There's all kinds of situations where you're always at least helping someone. Yeah. How good does it feel? Have you ever been like a little lady's home, just like kind of confused and cold or water not working, and you're the guy who walks in and saves the day? Yeah, definitely. Um, <laughs> I love that. My grandma, she's in her late 70s, and you always see like that person. You got a little soft spot because you can relate. Appreciate it. Yeah. I used to feel that way about some of the little ladies I would wait tables on, you know, but. Yeah. Yeah, actually coming into their house and like solving like a serious issue, that's kind of awesome, man. Yeah, it can get uh, a little hairy sometimes, but. Well, any job where you can make real money has got to have some serious issues, right? Come on, be, ah! First down, man. First down, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Put your purse down. <laughs> Dang it. You gotta hit the putt, Betty. God, dog it. Hey man, we positive vibes only, all right? <laughs> One of my dad's favorite phrases when I leave it short like that is, you big Mary. <laughs> Hit the ball, you big Mary. It's twilight, it's my favorite time now. Good right? Time. Little twilight golf, check out this course here, guys. Here in St. Petersburg, Florida, we got a swamp over here filled with gators. Right, we're off, off code. Oh hell, we're off path, man. You can get me in trouble on my show part. One more after this, perfect. All right. Oh, well, that's literally our three-hole challenge. Good thing we started filming. <laughs> All right, second second hole here in our challenge. We've got 296 yard par four. We're gonna beat the crap out of this ball. Try to get down there. All right, longest drive. Yeah, longest drive. <laughs> I love about driving this big mook. Oh, mama mia! All right, you couldn't see that ball fly. It started out right about here, and then went right about over here. God, dog, you put me to work, man. Yeah. Bunker. All right. At least it landed safe. We're in a fairway bunker out there. That's your tee, buddy. Oh, yeah. Look at this not kid. Bad, not a bad shot. Yeah, look at the different view. <laughs> look, how, look how nice <laughs> it is up there. <laughs> you son of a gun. <laughs> Let me hold it. Speedos are out, man. We make a heck of a pair. Little, little short game and long game over here, except he doesn't hit it that long. Oh, I just hit it out. That just out. Oh, man, that thing was hard hit. I mean, I like to think about this, dude. Like, if you wanted to pick up and go to a new city with the skill sets you have, how hard would that really be to go get to go and start making some good money? Not that hard. I mean, right? With the right guidance, you can you can do that pretty quickly. That's fine. You got my wedge. I got your pitching wedge. Yeah, we're sharing wedges today. <laughs> yeah, right here, here's you. I'm gonna hit. I'll try right, to hit the shot. Get up there. Oh, that was way short. Yeah. A lot shorter than I thought. Try not to hit it over the green. All right, second shot here on this par four. It kept us alive here, but I made it difficult. Like hitting on the, oh my God. Way under it. All right, it's probably in the hole. We won't double check that. <laughs> comb the sand. There you go. It's called a rake. I guess in your hands though, it looks feels like a comb. <laughs> Emilio, Emilio and Andre the Giant back at it. We could chip in for birdie. From here? <laughs> no, from, from my ball. You <laughs> didn't knucklehead. <laughs> there it is. Get up there. I chunked that a little bit. That's not bad, though. Oh, hell. Settle down. All right, so I got to go try to go get our part real quick. You know, as my dad would say, on a shot like that, uh, if you're trying to get it close to the hole, just swing better. <laughs> Look at that big face. <laughs> what a tip. <laughs> what a tip. Golden hour, baby. Speaking of tips, man, that's how I used to make a lot of money. You make money weekly just off of tips. Tips as a plumber? Oh, man. Really? Oh, yeah.
for gratuitous for it, man. Here. We're helping lives, you know? Talk about that while I hit. It's almost a talk sometimes when you're in interviews. You know, it's kind of a thing like how many, like what do, what do tips look like or commissions or spiffs or whatever it may be. And uh, a lot of companies will have a number, and I, you know, in, in mind. Really? Like a lot of the techs, you know, they'll be like, yeah, man, I'm making 100, 200 bucks a week on average just off the tips. And mm. you just have that one conversation. I mean, some people aren't making that in a week. Yeah. Knock it in. Come on, one time. One time. Oh! Oh! Tyler, why? <laughs> Those long arms. Where are they getting you? <laughs> right, what would it take cost-wise? Go get yourself a van. S assume you got your training and your license. If you want to go to a new city, get your van, stock it up, and start, start taking jobs and meeting people. What do you really need to get that going? I mean, most places you need a license for starters. Yeah. You know, but beyond that, you, you can get a pretty Pretty decent work, man. Maybe five, ten grand. Uh -huh. You know, something that's gonna worth, you know, be worth your money and last a while. Make connections somehow. You know, you gotta have the clientele before you get to where you want to go. You know, your, your your buddy who's doing concrete. He was talking. He goes to the city hall meetings and looks to meet people there and hear about little projects coming up and put his bids in. Yeah, I mean, even at like the like the uh, supply shops we go to, you see cards and flyers and stuff on their little cork boards to advertise work needed or you know someone needs work done they'll leave a phone number i mean there's definitely ways to make connections That's cool. all right guys we're on the third hole here our little three hole challenge we're two over par we're not playing the kind of golf we want to but we're having a great time today par five about 500 yards i do believe oh i think that did go nice it started off the right side of the bunker looked like it had draw to it Lost it again. Man, it felt good. Yeah, you know, I mean, the reason I, so, you know, one of the reasons I want to film with you, I talk about this stuff, is because a lot of people are looking for some independence. People are, people want to be able to go to different places. Yeah. You know, a lot of kids are looking for what, you know, uh, law school is just pumping out degrees, with, but there's not enough jobs. There's not enough jobs for the English majors, not enough jobs for our history and stuff, but there's so many jobs available in this industry right now. Yeah. I mean, I mean, you and I, we call these shops every day at this unknown company that hasn't sponsored us yet, but do they do they ever need help finding work? No, the problem is finding, you know, people that want to work. Yeah. We could probably assume, guys, my ball's somewhere in the cup, <laughs> uh, but since we don't have time to go get it, we're gonna hit Tyler's shot here. Good thing I got. I never saw it, where'd it go? <laughs> oh god <laughs> but you look really good doing it man oh yeah yeah nice That's ball funny. nice ball. celebrating like average shots like <laughs> what were you saying earlier today that just uh, because you were big and handsome it made it easier to come get jobs <laughs> it's a cruel world we live in no, guys but it's the same oh. <laughs> i'm up there that's what i always got either made fun of or appreciated for was that I was just presentable. You know, yeah. a, lot, a lot of the guys in Florida are just are just trying to make a paycheck. They're not trying to, you know, make a make a living or make a company look good or even themselves, you know. Say you got your training, which again, you can get paid to train in this industry, can't you? Um, oh yeah, definitely. Apprenticeships and stuff like that. Yeah, so instead of going into debt right at 19, you can start building a little wealth. Yeah. So if you do want to get that first bank loan to say start up that truck. Right. A lot of people down here, they'll go to like tech school while they're working apprenticeship at a company. Yeah. So they're learning as they go. You know, you're still you're still making 13, 14 bucks an hour while going to college, learning for a year or two, you know, you start making more money. And by the time you're done with the program, you're you're up to 20, 25 bucks an hour, depending on where you're at. Wow. And we work in tech sales and our salary is right around there, I would say. Oh hell, was that a chunker? Did you chunk on me? Nonetheless. You son of a bitch. <laughs> it's all right, you're giving good life advice, man. There you go. How about say, how much how much debt are you in for school? Uh, none. Weird. Yeah. And you're I a homeowner just, now too, right? Yeah, I did one year of community college and I just basically got out of it. Yeah. I'd like to go back for maybe a different kind of degree, degree someday, but who knows? At least you're starting off in a position of power. Yeah, exactly. Nice shot. 
Wow, baby. Whoa. Get in the hole. Wow. Get in the hole. Did we even announce that shot? Hey guys, third shot here on a par five, about 55 yards out. <laughs> Hell of a golf commentator, Emilio. Hell of a commentator. All right, let's see here. Hey, man, that's just a text. So let me ask you, Tyler, like, uh, realistically, let's say you're 18. You're smart. You're a hard worker. You dress well. You speak well. You know, you just, hello, thank you, sir. Hello, sir, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Say you start your training at 18. And if you're serious about getting trained, learning to do the job well, getting a bank loan, which you can do with a good salary, right. place like that, and starting your business, how far along could he be by 30? Pencils pro pretty uh pretty wide i mean could you be a blue collar millionaire by that age oh for sure yeah you could have a multi-million dollar company by then interesting well a few companies i worked for uh back in the day 25 30 years old um i mean they're selling they sell them for 12 to 15 million dollars to the big conglomerates so, you know you got 20 20 30 guys working for you i mean you got a multi-million dollar company yeah you can build a name around yourself and a good brand i mean yeah you could be a millionaire by 30 35 easy it's amazing, right? I know. I know this sounds like a pitch, but it's real, guys. <laughs> we work around this industry. I just didn't know because I went to art school and nobody told me about this stuff. I did some hard work and set us up with a short one here. Man, I'm so proud of that shot from 55 out. Knock it in, buddy. Bird, huh? The bird. The bird. The bird. The bird is the word. I said the bird. The bird. The bird is the word. The bird. The bird. The bird. The bird. The bird. The bird. I want to make it too. Hold on. <laughs> Two birdies. All right, now we're back to even. <laughs> now bird is the word. We got it in there. But yeah, dude, I, I, that's why I, I love talking about this stuff. Because again, it's like you don't really need so much luck as you do just like being smart and hardworking yeah. and methodical, right? Yeah, I mean, it's funny how over, you know, how the how the industry is really just like overthinking. Yeah. A lot of these guys coming up, they're, they're just trying to learn things that, you know, once you get to know them well and do them well. Mm hmm it's really just, it's second nature and it's common sense. I mean, a lot of it's just like, you know, loosen this and put it back on, loosen this and put it back on, or, you know, cut the pipe this long and glue it into the, a lot of it's pretty simple movement. Yeah, well, we're driving in by the way, guys. We didn't get our full 18 holes in, but we, we got our episode in by golly. Um, yeah, this, this, this <laughs> we're just we're time is right? bummer we got here. Let me show this light off. Man, it looks so pretty. I know on camera you would think we still have enough light to play, but we really don't. This is so dark, LOL. What a joke. Well, guys, that's our in the rough here with my man Tyler. Wait, let me get you in frame over here, part. He's standing on an apple box. He's really not this big. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hi, buddy. <laughs> All right, guys, let's end the rough here in St. Petersburg, Florida. We got other places to go to. I want to come out to you one day. Don't forget, it's all part of a network. We got Who We Golf With done in Austin, Texas. Multiple cameras, game show, talk show. In the rough, I could be anywhere. I might show up in Indiana, Iowa, Nebraska. You don't know. We're going to find out. Showed up in Florida and surprised him. Hey, come back anytime, man. Hell yeah. All right. Thank you guys for tuning in. Peace out. Oh, I should have said something cooler. Man, it's so hard to like cap it off right at the right moment. <laughs> Peace. I forgot we don't have a car. <laughs> oh, yeah, we got to get a ride. <laughs> <laughs> Where's your girlfriend now? <laughs> By the way, he'll understand when I say this. Ethan, where are you? Ethan, get over here. Hopefully the editor just keep that in. Hopefully.